Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to do another video on some wet sanding and buffing. And then later I'm going to make a video on painting the convertible rack and the front frame rails with a uh, satin black paint on the Impala. Um, I'm going to buff out, wet sand and buff the doors and the trunk lid today. I have the two doors out. I don't have the trunk lid in here yet. Um, I'm going to actually start with 800 grit sandpaper today. Um, let me show you. So I got my block here, my block here I'm gonna use. So I have 800 grit. So I'm gonna use the block with 800 grit, 1000 grit, 1200, then 1500 grit. And then 2000 I'll do by hand. And then 3000 and 5000 will be with the DA sander. Um, <clears throat> I'm starting with 800 grit. If you look at these panels here, they're dry. You can see the orange peel and kind of the rippliness, I'm trying to really get a good view here. It's hard to see, but if you look down the panel, they're kind of ripply. And that is caused by four heavy coats of clear. Now, um, most cars, you know, new cars and stuff like that, they only get two coats of clear. This obviously has way more clear on it than need be. But um, I do that because I want to, let me see if I can look at this ripple here real quick. See that? Sort of see it down the panel, the rippliness. I'm trying to get a good view of it so you can see it. And then I can show it to you after it's wet sanded and buffed and you can see how that's all gonna be gone. Now, if you only put two coats of clear on your parts, don't go starting with 800 grit. Probably don't even do 1000 grit because you're gonna sand through your clear into your color and you don't wanna do that because then you gotta repaint the panel. So uh, if you only have two coats of clear, I would recommend probably 1500 grit on a block, then 2000 and work your way up. Um, the reason why I'm going 800,000, 1200, 1500, that close in grits is, the only reason why I'm going that close in grits is to help take out the 800 grit sanding marks easier. So it's gonna be easier to get the 800 out with 1000, and then it's gonna be easier to get the 1000 out with 1200, rather than then going from 1000 to 1500, um, that's too big of a jump in my opinion. You're gonna probably leave a bunch of the thousand grit marks in there If you go from thousand to fifteen hundred I did do that on the last video and I did have to go back with the fifteen hundred because there was a couple spots that had a thousand Grit sanding marks still now when I use the 800 I'm not gonna go crazy with it. I just want to use it quick and Try to knock all this out of there right away. Just knock it out real quick with the 800 and then we'll go over it with a thousand. We don't need to go for a long time with a thousand. So by using this many grits of sandpaper, I'm hoping to use, to spend less time with each grit working my way up. Uh, yesterday I showed on that video when I painted the trunk floor and the floor pans, I showed um, that run that was in that one quarter panel. I sanded that with 320 grit sandpaper and I tried to sand it just enough to get most of it out. And then what I'll do is I'll probably go back with maybe 600, lightly hit it with 600, 800, and then work my way up on that. And fingers crossed that I don't go through. Um, I think there was four heavy coats. I might have hit it a fifth time real quick with clear. So there's quite a bit of clear in that area. So hopefully I'll be able to get it out. So what I did now is I, these panels are all wiped down. There's no dust on them. I want to make sure that you get it all off because you don't want to start uh, sanding and getting you know, dust and dirt underneath the sandpaper. So I'm gonna get some 800 grit and I will be back and I'll spray this down with some water and we'll start sanding with 800. Okay, I got a piece of 800 here. Now, um, I probably should have did this, but I did not do it. Um, you could take some of your sandpaper and soak it in a little bucket of water. What that does is it just kind of softens up the paper makes it a little bit easier to sand with. So I'm just gonna kinda go, I'm gonna block sand this just as if I were block sanding filler primer. Same way, kinda go on an angle, across the panel, try to go both directions. And also, you gotta get the edges, but don't try not to go on an angle on the edges because you're gonna wear through the clear a lot quicker on the edges than you will on a flat surface. So 
want to do a little, the sandpaper is grabbing a little bit because I did not soak it in water. It'll stop doing that once it gets absorbed with water. But I just want to sand a little spot here with this 800 so you can see that it doesn't take a ton of time to start flattening this out. Uh, the reason why I'm doing it like this and putting all this heavy coats of clear on it is so that I can really get these things flat when they're done and give it a nice depth to the paint job. You could do two coats of clear and sand it and be done with it, but uh, I'm trying to not have any orange peel or anything else in the paint. So now I'm going to water blade this off and see what it looks like. See how much more I need to sand. And this job is a mess. Get your floor filthy. I mean, as you can see, it just makes a mess of everything. No way, no way to prevent that. Just kind of have to deal with it. I haven't looked at this yet. Let's look and see how much more I need to go. Well, if you look, it's already flat. Um, on the edges here, you can still see. You see how that didn't get sanded all the way to the edge, so I got to come over to this edge a little bit closer. But this area that I did real quick didn't take long at all. I was able to knock all the imperfections out. That's what you kind of want to do is get that you know, that heavier grit sandpaper and try to get all your imperfections and uh, orange peel and everything out right away just to get it over with and then work on. Basically, once you get your block sanding done, after that, you're just kind of polishing out the sanding marks. Um, like on this door here, it's really clean. I have like a couple little specks of dirt, one there, there, and there. But I think that's about it in this panel, other than being some orange peel from all the heavy coats of clear, that's it. It's, you know, it's a very, very minimal dirt. And those sand out so fast and you'll never even see them when they're, do when they're done. So, all right, I'm gonna stop this video for now. I'm gonna keep sanding this with 800 and then uh, I'll probably maybe show you guys after a thousand grit what it looks like. So I'm gonna get the 800 finished and then get up to a thousand. I'll probably jump and get both of these panels at the same time with the 800 and a thousand and then I'll come back. Uh, look at the mess that's starting here. All right, so now everything is 800 and 1000 grit down. You can see it's nice and flat. Little bit of a shine to it, not bad. Um, next I'm going to do is go over it now with 1200 and 1500 with the block sander. Then after that, we're gonna move on to hand sanding with 2000 grit and then we will do the DA for 3000 and 5000. Um, I see, you know, you'll see people on TV and on YouTube, they sand their clear down with uh, DA sanders, which you can do that. Um, I don't, I've never had good luck with it, you know, just doing all the sanding with the DA. But then again, I also put on a lot more clear than a lot of people do, but I sand a lot of it back off you know, in the process of doing all this. Um, anytime I've used the DA from, let's say a thousand grit up, the panels to me look ripply when they're done because they weren't block sanded out nice and smooth. Um, if you're putting two coats of clear on, you probably could get away with that. I've never tried it with only two coats of clear. You know, I'm always the one that puts on a lot of clear because everybody wants a perfectly flat, smooth, mirror looking paint job. And this is the only way I've ever found out how to get it to look like that, is by piling on a lot of clear, sanding off a lot of clear. Um, it's really no different than, uh, you know, filler priming and block sanding. So I'm gonna go ahead and 1500, or 1200 and 1500 grit these panels. And then I'll come back and we'll do 2000 grit by hand. And then we'll do the 3000, 5000. I do have some 8000 sandpaper. I don't know if I need it or not. Maybe we'll try it. I've, I honestly have never tried it. I have a box of it sitting back there and I've never tried it. So I'll come back after the 1500 grit. 
Okay, I just got done with 1500 grit with the block on this door. What I like to do when I get to the 1500 grit sandpaper is I'll take the block out after I've blocked it all down with the 1500 and I fold it into thirds and I go over it by hand. And then 2000 grit, I just fold it into thirds and go over it by hand. And then at that point, I'm ready for the uh, DA sander with the 3000 and 5000. Um, I like to do this with the 1500 just to try to get out any last scratches. Um, I like to try to go the opposite direction because when you're using the block, you're kind of always going this way. So I like to take the 1500 and go the opposite direction just to try to get out any last little scratches that may be in there from the rougher grit sandpapers. Um, and also, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but it's always good to uh, wipe down your panel after each sanding. So, you know, after 800 grit, wipe it down. 1,000 grit, wipe it down. Keep cleaning it off after every grit of sandpaper. That's going to keep contaminants out. And if you hear any sort of a loud scratching sound, stop right away. Clean the panel off and also clean your piece of sandpaper because you know it only takes a tiny bit of dirt between that sandpaper and your paint to scratch it up pretty good. You can still fix it, you know, by wet sanding and scratch it out, but you're best to just stop as soon as you hear it. So I'm gonna finish up 1500ing these two panels and then they'll be ready for 2000 grit. Okay, done with the 1500 grit. Next is going to be 2000 grit. Um, <clears throat> and then we are ready to start with the DA sander and the interface pad, that foam pad that goes between the sandpaper and the sander itself. If you look right here, you can start seeing that the paint's starting to get a shine back to it. That's what it looks like after 1500 grit. I'm going to grab some 2000 grit now and show you that I just sand that by hand. Um, Grab a piece real quick. And like I said before, same as the 1500, I'm going to fold it into thirds. Now, when I wet sand a buff a car like this, this is like a show quality paint job. I, um, I figure roughly about two hours labor per panel to wet sand and buff it the way I am, plus materials. So if you go to a shop and somebody's quoting you 15, 20 grand for a paint job, you have to keep in mind, you know, a show quality paint job like this, you're gonna have probably 1,500 to 2,000 of that money is going to be wet sanding and buffing. That is for the labor of wet sanding and buffing and the materials of the sandpaper and the compounds and everything. All this stuff is extremely expensive. A pack of 50 sheets of sandpaper, these are five and a half by nine inch pieces, they're 50 some dollars per box, per grit. And in this case, on this car, I'm using one half sheet of sandpaper. So a five and a half by nine inch piece of sandpaper is doing two panels. So I use one sheet for of 800, one sheet of 1,000, one sheet of 12, one sheet of 15, one sheet of two. Um, the 3,000, 5,000, that's a different story. You can usually get just about a whole car out of one piece of each of those. But those are anywhere from eight to $10 per piece. So, you know, all this adds up. Compounds are anywhere from, you know, 30 to $80 a quart for a compound of, you know, for a quart of compound. And you're gonna use probably three quarters of a quart of each one. And you're gonna use two to three different compounds as well. So, you know, everything adds up and it adds up quickly. So if you really are looking to get, uh, you know, a nice show quality paint job from somewhere and they quote you 20 grand, ask them to break it down for you. Ask them to break down the labor and the materials and everything. And then you guys will start to see how much is really involved in getting this done. This car, like I said, I plan for about two hours per panel for wet sanding and buffing each panel. Now the hood and trunk lid and the quarter panels on this are bigger. So I'm probably gonna figure two and a half hours for each one of those. So you have five, 10, 
12, 14, 16 hours, plus the balances and stuff, you're probably looking at 20 to 25 hours of labor just to wet sand and buff this car, plus your materials. So I don't know if that helps any of you guys out if you're in the market to get a paint job or if you're going to do a paint job like this for somebody, you know, try to get you an idea what you should charge. Now, most shops aren't charging $50 an hour anymore because it, they don't make any money. You know, unfortunately, $50 an hour anymore just doesn't cut it. Um, I mean, hell, I went to stop at McDonald's yesterday and got a large quarter pounder meal and it was almost $12. So if you're making $50 an hour and you just bought yourself lunch, you know, you got to take 12 out of that. You know, if you're working for a body shop and they're going to make usually the same amount as what the guy that's doing the work is going to make or close to it, like a 50-50 split or a 60-40 split, it just all depends. You know, an average body guy isn't going to work for $20, $25 an hour anymore. You know, it's just not going to happen. They, they can't live on it. Unfortunately, that's just the way it's become. You know, I would be surprised if you guys can find somebody at the $50, $60 an hour range anymore. Um, you know, it's getting harder and harder, unfortunately. And then plus the material costs are just going through the roof. But I mean, it is what it is. If you're really passionate about an old car and you want to have a nice car, a really nice paint job, you know, it is what it is. You got to do what you like doing and what makes you happy. So now I'm going to 2000 grit this. And once we get done with this, we'll be ready for the DA sander. I really recommend soaking this sandpaper. I, I don't know why I didn't do it. I usually do do it. I'm in a little bit of a hurry today, so kind of skip that step. It won't grab as bad on you. And also, put some soap in your water. That'll help, too. Just get some, like, Dawn dish soap and just put a couple drops in your water when you fill up your water bottle. That'll help the sandpaper glide along the... Um, paint a little bit easier for you. The higher grits you get, the more it's going to want to stick to the panel because the panel is really smooth right now. So it's going to want to stick on you. So I just take your time and just keep going over it for a little while here with the 2000. We're just trying to work out those rougher sanding marks. Make sure we get them all because 3000 and 5000 aren't going to do anything for you as far as like the 800 to 1500 grit sandpaper marks. Not going to cut that out. So all it's going to do is cut out the 2000 grit. That's my opinion. I could be wrong, but that's just how I've noticed it working. You know, I, I remember once a long time ago, my buddy had told me who did this for a living, told me that you want to concentrate on a little area. Let's say this little eight by eight area right here. And he told me, he's like, stay in that area and count a hundred strokes back and forth. So you wanna count a hundred strokes in this little eight inch by eight inch area of sand and then move on to the next. He said, break it up into squares and keep counting a hundred strokes, kind of moving your sandpaper all different directions. This is once you get to the higher grit sandpaper. Obviously that's not gonna work on the lower grits. But uh, that was just one of his recommendations. And you know, I've always kind of done it like that. And uh, I definitely noticed a big difference by doing it like that versus just trying to blow over it real quickly. So yeah, just sit there and do that. Listen to some music and take your time. You know, uh, the more time you spend doing this sanding process, all the way up to 5,000, the better you're gonna look. It's gonna look when it's done. Also buffing, buffing takes time. Um, I don't recommend running the buffer at a really high speed. You're better off to run it at a slower speed and take your time. And it'll, it'll melt together and come together and shine right up for you. So I'm going to go ahead and 2,000 these two panels. And uh, I'll come back and we'll do the DA with 3,000 and 5,000. Okay, this one is finished with 2,000 grit. If you look in the, you can see the window reflection now. It's getting more and more, and it's getting shinier and shinier. As we go, I still have the 2000, this one, but look at the difference. This is 1500 grit panel. This is a 2000 grit panel. You can see up in there how much shinier it looks compared to the 1500. And then once we do the 3000 and 5000, it'll even get more. 
Okay, I have a piece of 3000 grit. It's made by 3M, it's called Trizac. We're gonna hit that next on the DA sander here with a foam pad. It's called an inner, I think they call it an interface pad. So let me get set up over here and we'll start with the 3000. Okay, um, get your pad wet down, wet down your panel. Try not to put as much water as you do for regular sanding because this needs less water to work better. Keep it at a slow speed and just work it around. Take your time with it. Don't push hard. Kind of just let it glide over the surface of the paint. This, you don't have to worry about the edges as much. Uh, pretty hard to burn through with this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the 3000 grit on this door, and then I'll come back, we'll wipe it off, and show you what it looks like after 3000 grit. Okay, I spent about 10 minutes going over that with the 3000 grit. Let's wipe it off and we'll see what it looks like. You can see how it's shining more and more now. I'm gonna do the other door and then we'll hit it with 5,000, but I'll try to show you the difference here. This is after 3,000, this is 2,000. Now, you can buff after 2,000 grit, nothing wrong with that at all. Um, just gonna take you a little bit longer to buff. I like to try to wet sand as much as I can up to 5,000 because the more wet sanding I do, the shinier I can get it with the wet sanding, the less buffing I have to do, which means the less heat I'm creating with the buffer too. And also when you're running the buffer, it's always good to try to run it at a slower speed. Don't go uh, 3000 RPM because you're just gonna end up burning through the paint or blistering it or something along those lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and 3000 the other door and I'll come back and we'll 5000 this one. Okay, we're ready for 5000 grit, same product, same brand. 5,000 grit tries that. Do the exact same thing we did with the 3,000. Wet your pad. This I used on a previous project, that's why it had some red on it. But same thing, I'm just going to go over this for probably another 10 minutes. Come back and show you what it looks like after 5,000 grit. Okay, just got done with the 5,000 grit. I'm gonna squeegee this off. These water squeegees are really good for wet sanding and buffing. Saves on a bunch of paper towels. You can feel how smooth it is when you run the blade along the paint because it's 5,000 grit. Um, I'm not going to use the 8,000 on this this color. I don't think it's worth wasting it. Um, I'll use it. I'll try it on a black paint job. But there you go. That's with the 5,000. Look at the shine in there already. 
And that's why I like using this because it just makes my buffing that much easier. So now I'm gonna 5,000, let me show you the difference here. So that's 5,000. Three thousand to five thousand. So I'm going to go ahead and five thousand that other door, and then I'll come back and start buffing these two out. Okay, I'm done with the five thousand grit. Now I'm going to start polishing the paint. I'm going to use a turbo cut by Wizard. Um, I used to get this locally about fifteen minutes down the road at a paint store but they're the ones that kept screwing up all the paint colors for me, so I'm no longer using them. And the new company I'm using doesn't sell Wizard products, but I like it. So I found it on Amazon, so you can order this stuff on Amazon. Now this compound turbo cut removes up to 1,200 to 1,500 grit sanding scratches. So this is a really nice one to start with because it'll get anything I've missed, you know, from wet sanding. So I'm gonna put, I use foam pads the waffle pads, the white one for this compound, and then the black one for the next one. So I try to put a generous amount on. And just work it into the panel. Uh, about 1800 RPM or so. Start slow, kind of work it around. And then just work small sections at a time. You don't need to go really fast with the, you don't need to spin the buffer really fast, you can do it slowly. Try to wash your edges so you don't burn the edges off. It's gonna be hard to pick this up on camera, but that's the downfall with uh, the camera is you cannot get a good view of this. I don't know if that'll help or not. That looks a little bit better, but you can see how well that takes the rest of the sanding marks out of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and polish the rest of this door and that door, and then I'll come back with the other compound. Okay, first compound is done. Now what I did was I took a microfiber towel and I lightly wet, and, or wet it. Because um, it's always good to wipe this compound down with some water on your rag. Get all your jams and everything cleaned up real good. You don't have to worry about uh, drying it off. Just want to get the compound off. This helps it from scratching. Um, spend a lot of time on that first compound because that's what's going to make the difference. The next compound I'm going to use isn't really going to take out the marks like the first compound I used. So just take your time and wipe it all down real good. Okay, and then we're gonna use a black pad, and we're gonna use this Wizard Mystic Polish. This removes swirls and light scratches. So this will be the last compound I put on here. Um, it really won't need anything more than that. Same thing, same method. 
put some on your panel. This had a dry spot in it when I squeezed it. Get that off of there. Work it in. All right, I'll get this uh, polished and then I'll come back and show you the final product. Okay, um, that is done on this door. I still got to do the other one. Now I have a dry microfiber towel and I'll just go over it and get off any of the extra compound that was left over. Um, I recommend keeping a towel for the outside surfaces once you're done with the polish and then a separate towel for your door jams, just in case you pick up something in the door jam that could possibly scratch your outside of your car. So let me uh, get this wiped down and I'll show you what it looks like here. Now this was 800,000, 1,215, two, three, and seven different sandpapers it took to get to this point. Um, I have a wax that I could put on this that can be used after a freshly painted paint job um, or you should wait at least 30 days before you wax it. I am not going to wax it at this time because I still have to put the door on, I have to put the glass in the door, um, I have to put the moldings on the car. So once I get all that done, I'll probably have to go over it with the black pad one more time just to get any you know fingerprints or little tiny scratches from doing stuff out and then I will put a coat of that wax on there. If I put it on now, I'm just wasting the product because I'm gonna literally buff it right back off. So let me show you what this looks like. It's gonna be really hard to get this on the camera, but maybe if I kind of point towards that window there, you can see how flat it is. And I don't know if you remember on the beginning of the video how ripply it was from all the layers of clear. Uh, maybe if I go from this side, you can see it better or not. Yeah, it's, it's real hard to pick up in, on the camera. But that's going to wrap up this video. I am going to finish that other door. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get to the trunk lid or not yet. I am probably... Um, I think... Maybe 9.30 or 10. Maybe around 10 I started it's one o'clock now. It's probably been between three and four hours that I've been working on these two doors. Um, I wanna get the uh, frame and the convertible rack painted today so that can dry overnight. We're just gonna put a couple coats of a single stage white satin black. Um, the front suspension frame and everything, that's staying together. Normally I would like to paint all that stuff separate. Usually I'll do like a gunmetal gray for the tie rods and stuff like that. But in this case, everything's just going to stay together. I'm just gonna shoot everything black again. It was done once a long time ago. It's still in pretty good shape. So we're just gonna go over it just to freshen it up and make it look new again. Um, so that'll be the video later on today. I have to put plastic over the car. Just wanna protect the um, floor pans from the paint yesterday that I put on those. Um, I left the plastic everywhere else on the car, so it shouldn't be too hard to just uh, plastic off the rest of it and get that black done. So if you guys are liking what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to send me a message and I will do my best to answer them. And um, I've been getting, you know, some comments here and there. Everything's been real positive, nothing negative. I appreciate that. Um, I mean, other than that, everything's going good. Um, I wanna take this car and I'm going to show you this car completely put together when it leaves here, minus the interior. So it's gonna have windows, uh, body trim, motor will be in it. Um, it should be a running motor when it leaves here. 
Uh, I'm not gonna tune it. I'm not a tuning guy, especially on a tri-power. I'm not good at tuning carburetors. Um, it'll have to go somewhere else to get that done. But uh, hopefully in the next two weeks here, it should be a running assembled car. So, all right guys, thanks again. Please, if you'd like what's going on, please like and subscribe. You guys have a good afternoon. I will see you later on today to do the black on the frame.